and welcome back. Now, in this particular video, I want to cover some things that you need to know about effects and layer styles. And I want it to be its own video because I don't want to make the other sections of the videos very long or ridiculously or unnecessarily long. I also want to do it because I don't want you to later have to sift through all sorts of kind of things or try to remember where certain things are. And like this, as well as, say, like the pen tool, I don't want you to have to um, go through a different video to get to the content. Okay? So, that being said, let's get right into it. So the first thing that I want to do is create a new image. I'm going to press Control N on the keyboard and hit Enter. Now I'm not going to fill this with a regular color, I'm just going to do a gradient. So from corner to corner, drag a selection, and there we go. Full screen, press F twice, zoom in with Control plus, and now I'm at 100%. I'm going to press B for brush, and I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to put a dot here. Now the first thing I want to cover is the difference between opacity and fill. So the opacity is going to be your entire object, including any kind of effect that you have on it. While fill is just the actual color that you have. So I'm going to take the fill down to zero. And I'm going to double click this layer. And be sure to double click off the lettering or it's going to think that you want to change its name. So click outside there. And now we get its layer styles properties. So I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to try for like a raindrop effect here. That's something that uses a lot of different kind of, um, of these effects. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Drop Shadow. And I'm going to set its, let's say, distance down to maybe 1 or 2. Uh, 2 I think looks good. I'm going to change the size also down to 2, but I'm going to do it by typing it in there. And I'm going to go ahead and give it an inner shadow. Also, right now you can see that the ring is kind of only out here. I want it to be, I want the whole drop to appear. So I'm going to give it an inner shadow, which will capture that other side. And first of all, before I go any further, there are many tutorials out there. And especially for something like a raindrop, I'm sure that they all do better than what I'm going to do. But my point is really to just touch on layer styles and give you an idea of what's going on. But most importantly, to teach you to teach yourself. And if you're out there following tutorials, including this one, and you're just trying to make a mental note or writing down what setting did what, or what I had my settings, a lot of tutorials out there want you to learn the wrong way. Or I won't say want you to learn the wrong way, but they're, the way that they're designed teaches you the wrong way because you'll have something like it, a written one, you'll say, do as I did here, and now do as I did here. And that's terrible because you're not learning a damn thing, okay? So no matter what you do, always explore, experiment, see what does what, play around with the different blending modes, and, you know, again, start at the top and then use your mouse wheel to cycle through them and see what works for you. And let's see here while I'm in here doing this, actually. I like soft light. That kind of gives me a nice blue glow around here. And... Let's see, what else? Always go through them all. You know, you might think that, oh, this is perfect, but then there might be one even more perfect down the road. So I did like soft light out of them all. So I'll keep that. And I'm okay with the distance and everything else for now. I'm going to go to inner glow. And why I'm choosing inner glow is because I want just a little bit more of an outline around it. I could use something else. I could use stroke for what I want to do, but stroke is outside. I want inside, so I'm going to do inner glow, change it to black. And I'm going to go ahead and, let's say, maybe increase its size a little, maybe seven or so. And I'm going to go through these also and see what I got for choices. Darker color, maybe. I liked overlay out of the bunch. 
Pretty sure it was overlay. Yeah, overlay I kind of like. The opacity, I'm going to bring down probably around 21-ish. Now I'm going to go to Bevel and Emboss. And right there, you see that I clicked on Bevel and Emboss, and I've made this mistake many times. So I click on it, I see the effect was applied. And then I immediately come over here and I start making setting changes, but I don't pay attention to up here, and right now I'm still in the Inner Glow properties because that's the one I have selected. So sure, I just checked this one, but I'm not there. So you need to make sure that you always click on the actual blending style or layer style. So here I want to, I want to go ahead and drop my technique down here. And again, explore all these on your own. They're, it's a little outside the scope to go fully in detail on these. I'm going to change my depth up and let's say not that much say 200 and 205 for now size I'm going to bring up also and yeah right now it's not looking like a raindrop it's looking kind of like a pencil but let's say around 18 but now I'm going to make this more curved or softer by softening it and let's just crank that right up there now I don't want the black here because it's not looking like a raindrop it's looking cool it's looking like maybe like a rivet and I'm gonna change its color here for shadow so you have shadow and you have highlight and again without the bevel and emboss with the bevel and emboss so you can see the highlight is up here and then the shadow is down here and even without using these layer styles or effects you can actually create these same things with just using paint. And that's a really good way to learn. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to actually white. And that looks good to me. That is starting to give that white appearance. Now let's say that you had an image. And with doing a, a paint, you know, if all you do in Photoshop are paints, I, I totally have to urge you to try to do other things. If you're at the pub one night shooting pool or anything like that and something catches your eye like say a glass of Guinness and you want to you know you look at that glass and you see the condensation and the beads running down it you know that image you might look at and say "Ooh, I bet I can create that in Photoshop try to or grab a picture off the internet you know and try to like duplicate it that's where you're really gonna learn you know, just like, you know, with any of the tools, that's the best way to do it. So, let's say up here I had a gold poster or something in my image to where the light source might be influenced by. Then I would want to, like, grab, like, maybe my highlight mode, click on it, and come over here and sample, you know, whatever it was. Or in this case, since I do have a blue background, I'm just going to go ahead and sample that background and I'll say okay so that's now my highlight and I could do the same thing with this one too now I have a gradient here so I'm gonna go ahead and go way down here and I don't like the look I'm gonna go back to white but you get the idea now shading goes the lighting aspect of it now this right here is very important and this right here this global lighting is extremely important but when you're looking at the dial your source being the center dot here and the crosshairs is, is your sun or your light source so as you move that around you could see that the highlight and the shadow change so you want to play around with these and the closer you are to it is the altitude so if this were flat here and this was the horizon or the grass or whatever up here being the sky, you have the sun. The sun rises and it goes through its course of the day and then sets. So that's what altitude is pretty much. So you can set the angle, or I'm sorry, your altitude. You can set that and your angle by moving these, moving this little cross here closer and further away from your key point. And in following tutorials, of course, Somebody might say, you know, do these settings like I did them. So you just type them in there. It's much easier. 
But I'm going to just go ahead and play around here for a minute. And I want that nice little droplet I had. And I'm going to move that out. And that looks about good, which was pretty close to default. I think its default was 32 altitude. So I'll just go back to that for now. I'm going to go into my gloss contour. And I'm going to cycle through these. And this is a very cool thing. I get a lot of really nice effects out of using these. People might think that I spend years on like some of my metal textures when actually it's just a particular contour. So doing good paints is really all about knowing where to find good resources. I'm going to go back to the original and I'm going to hit OK. And now here we have all the effects. And now I could shut off each and every effect individually to play around with it and see what's doing what or maybe which one is it that I want to adjust. And I can shut all of them off by clicking on that. I'm going to go ahead and click up here and expand that or excuse me collapse it. I'm going to create a new layer. And let's say I had a layer here and I'm going to go ahead and again continue to paint but now I'm on a layer that doesn't have any kind of layer styles. But let's say I didn't want to go through it now and do all them layer styles. Well I don't have to. I can go ahead and press Alt, come over to this effects, left click and drag and you see how it changes to the double arrow? And then just release. Bam, there it is. And now if I drop this one's fill, you'll see that it now has all the layer styles applied to it. If you want to delete effects, just grab the effects and bring them down into the trash can. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer. And once you have an effect applied like this and you have the fill turned down to zero, what you're basically doing is like the title says, and that's painting with effects. So now I'm just painting with effects. Let's say, for instance, I had, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to create a text layer now. Press T on the keyboard for that. And I'm going to just start. Let's say Arial. I'm going to just say anything. So there we go. I'm going to set this to bold and click on my movement tool. Get this out here. Press Control T to make that bigger and hit Enter. So I'm going to rasterize this so it's no longer text. And I'm going to lower the fill on it. And I'm going to now grab this effect and bring it over to it. And there we go. Now I have a nice, cool, watery name. It's transparent. I can see behind it. And there we go. We're off to the races. OK, I'm going to go ahead and market this and make a trillion pennies. And I'll see you later. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you a very important thing you need to keep in mind. I'm going to create two new layers. And on the first one here, I'll select my marquee tool by pressing M. I'm going to draw a square. And I'm going to fill that with my foreground color, Alt Backspace. Now I'm going to go to the Selection menu, choose Transform Selection. And I'm going to Alt Shift click that to maintain its proportions from the center. Hit Enter. And now select Layer 3 and fill that in with my background color, control backspace, and deselect it with control D. A lot of shortcuts, I know. But it is efficient, isn't it? So I'm going to double click on number two here, and I'm just going to give it a quick bevel, maybe chisel hard, depth up a little bit, and size up a lot, and a drop shadow, and let's say I come distance way out here for exaggeration purposes here. Click OK. And I'm going to drag that one to this new layer or other layer. So now let's say I'm working on a paint. I'm zoomed in. So I can't even see this one. This one's just out of the equation. I can't, you know, I can't see it. So I'm in here. I'm working on this new layer. And I'm applying all these blending modes. And let's just say I want to change my drop shadow. And I start moving my drop shadow around. Now you see what's happening? I'm changing the shadow to it, and not only it, 
But if I have, and I often do, have over 100 layers, and I have global lighting on, that's what it's doing. It is changing the effect to every layer that I have a layer style applied to that has global lighting checked. So I will probably reiterate that many times. But you have to really know when you're doing your paints that this is your enemy and you do not want it on. It's great to have on on certain things. You know, certain images. Well, let's say you wanted to frame Lee Harvey Oswald for killing the president. You might want to like take that shadow of the gun and do a little bit better job on it than what was done. And in that case, you would want to have global lighting on. Okay. So that's about it. I wanted to get those points across and have it in its own video for you. And now it is. And I will see you in the next tutorial.